We're closing out round two of the 2020 Major League Rugby season here in Las Vegas with a Western Conference grudge match between the San Diego Legion and the Colorado Raptors. And this match is the fourth of four matches played in Vegas this weekend with some thrilling results, including today's previous match where Houston just fell short of snatching victory from Toronto with a death. Also, Austin fell short against New York, putting in a spirited performance. And New England couldn't quite do the job against Utah as they held on 39 points to 33. Let's see how those matches affected the standings. And we have a new leader on top of the table, Toronto Arrows, courtesy of their win earlier on. And we see quite a congested middle of the table. And perhaps NOLA or Atlanta will have something to say about Toronto on top as they clash later on today as well. Welcome viewers to sunny Las Vegas for the fourth of four matches this weekend between last year's runner-up San Diego Legion and the Colorado Raptors. I'm Mark Stabena, joined by rugby legend of USA, Brian Hightower. Now, Brian, San Diego coming off a big win last weekend. Colorado Raptors yet to post their win this season. How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, San Diego last week at home got a little bit of payback against Seattle, and they look in mid-season form already, and that's because there's not a lot of changes to this San Diego squad, and of the changes they've made, some important big signings like Ma Anonu in the centers. Colorado, on the other hand, last week, disappointing performance, but the same, by contrast, lots of changes for the Colorado Raptors in the offseason. They're just starting to gel. I expect a good game today, but San Diego probably has the edge as far as maturity. So what are some of the keys to victory for both of these teams today? Well, let's take a look at San Diego first, and their keys are first to mix up the attack pressure with the kick and then keep the defense guessing for Colorado and then let the big dogs run. You got David Tomalau, C.O.C. Mahoney and Aaron Mitchell, 900 pounds a human. You got to unleash those beasts. And finally, last week, seven penalties in the fourth quarter, the last 20 minutes against Seattle. They got to have more discipline in that last 20. And then on the other side, Colorado, well, it was turnovers, 25 of them last week, and they have to stop that. They're shooting for a net of 10 turnovers total as a team. They got to improve the, that giveaway ratio. And then you got to kick with precision. Two, two Fijian bookends on the corners and danger all over the place. If you kick to San Diego, it might be trouble. And finally, for Colorado, I want to see their wings looking for work. Bring big Johnny Ryberg off the corner. He's a load to deal with and make San Diego deal with that rhino. Wow, plenty of rugby talent on display here today, as you heard. And Brian, who are some of the players to watch? Well, I like the battle of the nines, Mark, and Nate Augsburger, he is a capped U.S. Eagle, 24 of them all in all, and he is such a little Tasmanian devil. Loves to push the pace, loves quick ball from the base, and he loves to have a run. So look for him to get involved early and often. And then on the other side of the ball, you got his understudy, Nick Boyer, who was with San Diego last, last year, and he gets a chance to come in to Vegas and maybe challenge Nate Augsburger at the number nine. And, and I really like the way that Nick plays as well quick from the base he likes to have a run himself and look for him to have a standout performance for colorado today well we are all set up for a spectacular finish here in vegas don't go anywhere folks as the kickoff is coming up just after the break
I think the training environment is what separates this place more than anything else. Um, I think that a little bit of, there's like a team environment with a personalized training effect. So I think that's the problem with a lot of other places, it's one or the other. It's, you know, we, we're, you know, we're all together in this class, but there's no specificity with each person, or it's only personal training, which really there's just no camaraderie. So this, this, this facility, the way we set it up, we try to get that team environment, that group camaraderie, along with a personalized, tailored program for your needs and, and your goals. Culture is just a massive thing here. Um, from person to person, you know, we'll have a 30-year-old athlete who's crushing a 300-pound deadlift right next to a, you know, a 45-year-old woman who's just doing walking lunges, and you know, the cohesiveness between the two people um, really ties the whole gym together. Rugby fans, rugby is everywhere. The giant is awakening, and rugby wrap up is there with the alarm clock. Rugby wrap up, global rugby coverage, sometimes with a wake. Weekly studio shows, daily website content, breaking news, evolving stories, the biggest names in the game on camera, all over social media. Pundits from all corners of the planet, local, global, professional, amateur, female, and male. Find it all on rugbywrapup.com. Welcome back, viewers. We are moments away from this clash between the San Diego Legion and the Colorado Raptors here at Sam Boyd Stadium. And Rhino Rugby is the official ball and technical training equipment supplier of the Major League Rugby. Visit rhinorugby.com today for all your rugby needs. Let's have a look at today's lineup, starting with San Diego. Yeah, to me, this is all about Newton's law of motion. It's mass times acceleration, and the tight five is going to be huge for San Diego. Let's have a look at the Raptors. They've made three changes in their starters with Fafida at loose head prop, Nick Boyer at scrum half, and New Zealand star Rennie Ranger at outside center, which moves Chad London back to inside center for this match. Another New Zealand star much talked about is Ma'a Nonu. Got the kickoff go. any moment now. Derek Summers is our man in the middle. Checks his watch. All is good. We are about to kick off this fourth of four massive matches here in Las Vegas over the weekend with the Raptors with the opening opportunity Boyer former San Diego Legion player will be relishing this occasion to play against his former teammates as the Raptors clear with a great kick taking them over the halfway line Brian it would be interesting to see Thomas Quinlan wearing the number 10 jersey for Colorado under pressure today and just see what this former Ireland U20 player is made of. Perfect rugby conditions once again today as the Legion win the first line out of the game. Clever box kick, Ryberg unable to take that one. Plenty of pressure coming through and it's paid off for the Legion. We're talking to the backs coach, Zach Test, for the Legion before the game and he said he just thought that this Colorado side was a little unsettled, maybe a little unsure of, himself, of themselves right now and they were going to test him under the high ball and this time Ryberg goes up and San Diego wins this first battle. They get the scrum. Well, Ryberg, if you see, plenty of size, oodles of strength, but a little high challenge, especially when it comes to taking the high ball, so expect to see more kicks onto him today. Far side, gone down. That's always hard, isn't it, Brian, when you 
first touch of the game is a drop ball from a kick. Doesn't do anything for the nerves. Well, of all the strengths that Ryberg has, one of them that he was working on when, when we talked about him last year, the, the real area of focus for him was the aerial contest, really improving in that skill area. Crouch. Well, it wasn't the easiest of takes for John. He'll be looking to redeem himself and work to his strengths and, as you mentioned, many strengths he does have. And it's the first penalty now for the Legion. And it's within kicking range. Now, twice against the loose head prop for Colorado. Stay up, yeah. That's Kalepi Fafita. Luke Burton. Previous experience in Super Rugby. He's got a pretty good boot on him, and this should be an automatic three to get the scoreboard ticking over for the Legion. It's a 25-year-old Australian. Made his presence felt last week with a stellar performance. We talked about in the pregame the additions that San Diego made, and there are not, a, not that many of them, but Luke Burton comes in as a key to relieve Joe Peterson, who was one of the stars of the league last year. He'll shift back to his natural fullback position. And then Ma'ananu, of course, in the centers, certainly gives them more options in the backfield as well. So two great pickups for the Legion. You mentioned Joe Peterson coming back to fullback, but he will have to fight his way back in despite being one of the best players in the league last year. So an opportunity for the likes of Dylan Audsley who wears the 15 jersey today to make it his own. As Burton lines up. Solid strike, and it's good. So the first points of the game go to the Legion. Last year's runner-up, three points to zero over Colorado. Just a quality strike from the Australian fly half. Well, ch and chalk up one turnover now. Raptors trying to keep it under 10 for the game, and, and they've given up one. So the restart now. Under the hands of Audsley. Scurries outside of the 22 zone. See some enthusiastic Colorado defense. Boyer. Digs his head down, trying to pilfer possession. Hold, hold. Augsburger shapes up for the box kick. He's in the middle of the field and he sends the ball straight down the middle. It went high, didn't go particularly far. Bounces around this firm artificial pitch of Sam Boyd Stadium. You've seen it happen all weekend. It's a bit of a lottery out there, Brian. And that box kick kind of just goes to in, into a, a donut hole there in the middle of the field. And I think a lot of the backs expecting that ball to carry a little bit further, but it just sets up nicely and then bounces on the ground. That's actually a dangerous ball for Colorado if they don't take it in the air. Keep your feet on you. Show me that shoulder. Keep your feet on Let's go. Let's go. So Colorado. Fortune favoring them on that occasion. Boyer. Crouch. Stands next to his former teammate. Fine. 2019. Wonder if there's any banter between the two. As Boyer feeds. Solid platform from his pack of eight. Ah, oh, the beautiful spiral pass. First touch for Ranger to Cruze. And oh, out of the corner wasn't a high tackle. This may be a penalty try. Well, what an opening movement by the back line of the Raptors, Brian. Wasn't clear on the, well, wasn't clear on the grounding. See, see clear grounding. Good for me. So you're good on the grounding. So we're happy to give it a try. Try. So assistant referee Cat Roach says grounding's good here. And you're right, I think the tackle was up high. They would have had to have a different conversation there. But that is the strike ability of Mika Cruze. And really one of the stories about Cruze is the tutelage that he's getting from the veteran All Black inside of him. Oh, 
A left to right spiraling pass out wide from the midfield was a doozy. And just the amount of confidence, Mark, that that builds for a team who struggled last week and really looking to rebound from a shaky performance. Just to put this powerhouse in the MLR under pressure early in the game. Conversion attempt from way out wide. Virtually on the sideline. Woodman steps in off the left boot. And it's waved away. Let's take this opportunity to throw it down to our sideline eye. Jessamine McIntyre. Jessamine. Guys, you were just talking about exactly what they were looking for from Rennie Ranger as he has been working with Mika Cruz. They brought him here to do just that, to free him up to score. Now, obviously, he wasn't the one to run it down for the penalty try, but this World Cup hopeful at only 21 years old is learning everything he can from the wealth of experience that Rennie Ranger brings. You just saw exactly what Colorado is looking for from their international signing. Thank you, Jessamine. And to keep an eye on that, on those two in combination today, Cruze, Ranger. But right now it's Audsley. That is seen to be a perfectly weighted kick, just lacking a little in the chase. In fact, not just lacking in the chase, but not even retreating. And that has resulted in a penalty for Colorado. Yeah, and that's the, the crucial thing about a kick is Osley puts the ball up and he, he's trying to put people on sides, but the the players that are lingering in front of the ball have to actually retreat so that they can be put on side and make an intent to get back to give Colorado a chance to field the ball. And that's what referee Derek Summers has a problem with, and he's right. Just kind of a lazy loitering. That's, that's a law that we've seen receive some tinkering over the decades of rugby, that offside rule, and trying to encourage a free-flowing game as a chip over the top from the Raptors, playing with confidence now. They lead San Diego by two points. But just a little enthusiastic on that kick. We talk about the offside rule. There's another example of it when you kick the ball. Take your team forward. The chasing, supporting players must be behind that point of where the ball was kicked. Yeah, and it's Quinlan with a little nudge forward, but Boyer had already passed the ball, and then his line to get to the kick had put him in front of Burton. So the Legion with a chance to hit back. Was in the middle, nearly upset as sort of a sow flies onto it. The ball is kept alive, and now it's Tamalau still going. Tamalau can't find his support. There were too many blue jerseys there, and Boyer is flung to the ground over the sideline. Well, two great moments there from the Legion. The first is Save Totovasau, my player of the week last week against Seattle, and he comes in off the blind the side What's the number? to take the ball off of that sloppy line out. And then on the other side for San Diego, Tira Patterson, who cleans up in defense. This line. And that rumble by Tavita Tamalau, and that's what I was asking for in the beginning of the game, is you gotta let those big dogs carry the ball, and Tamalau proves why. Well, the Raptors certainly need to keep an eye on that leaky defensive line. As you mentioned, Brian, some dangerous attacking players for the Legion as a penalty. So this is an early push attacking the line-out jumper before he has a chance to hit the ground. Yeah, number one. Number one. Now he's on the ground. He's on the ground. The yellow card. Dangerous play there, Brian. You can have the line-out if you just want to. You don't have to kick. So the Raptors now playing with only 14 men. 
Well, that's huge, too, because it's a front row player that is Kalepi Fafita, who's going to take a 10-minute break. Well, let's see if the Legion can capitalize. You could have put your money on the fact that they were going to try and drive this one. One less player in the pack to push against. And have they driven it over? Let's have a look. Automatically held up, so we'll have a five-minute scrum. Well, and now you have to shuffle. You got to take a player off the field. You got to bring on a front rower. Yeah, he's coming on. Brian, who's off? And in the first couple scrums, Paul Mullen at tight head wearing the number three jersey. Who's coming on? He's a late starter in the lineup. No, he's already off the field. One white is already off the field. Who's the. Doing some damage there in the front row. Six white. Six. So because you have to have a healthy front row of trained front row players to scrum down. There is Tao Lofo. Come on. Comes in for the front row in number six. Michael Curry leaves. Can the Legion score a try their own in response to Colorado's effort and regain this lead? That's not going to work. Just a, little to, a little to the left. A little left. You're just not aligned. Yeah. Let's go, boys. Come on, back Yep, good. I'm happy that time. Can't see in your frame right now, but the San Diego back line spread out. Mahanonu looking for his first touch. Crouch! Be an impactful one. And standing really close to Luke Burton as well, and that gives him an option to either be a crash runner, potentially, or a, a dummy. What a tantalizing clash. That would be Nonu with ball in hand. Ranger opposite him. Love it. You get the feeling, though, if San Diego can put the nudge on Colorado in the scrum, that they'll just keep it in the scrum and just try to march forward, earn another penalty. Colorado look to hold firm, but just as you predicted, Brian, and it's resulted in a penalty try. Well, what a confidence booster and a confidence destroyer for Colorado. Well, we mentioned the weight of some of the players when I've talked about carrying the ball, but also in the scrum, it helps to have a couple 300 pounders in the scrum with you. And the, the penalty against Colorado is just not pushing straight, taking that pressure and stepping sideways. Normally the wheel is the fault of the team that's going backwards. And it just makes sense. That's the team who's not able to deal with the pressure. And Brian, as we welcome our brand new viewers to rugby, maybe a little explanation of the penalty try. And Yeah, so it, it, if there's a penalty, that if that penalty wasn't there, that, that the try would have occurred naturally, then the referee has an opportunity to go under the sticks. You don't even have to convert. You get an automatic seven pointer. Box kick from Augsburger. Once again, he's chasing players, couldn't quite get there in time to contest as the Raptors quickly attack. Ryberg held up. Ball spits out. Boyer cleans up. Flat pass from Quinlan. There's the Legion. Put the pressure on in defense. Comes back the short side through White. Mountain of a man. Stays in the field of play. Pifoletti straight over the top of that one. Couldn't turn it over as the Raptors retain possession. And was he in the air? 
Yes, he was. Just in the air. Just in the air. So it's Baramalua out catch the ball. in the centers playing defense, and he times it almost perfectly, but you cannot tackle a man whose feet are not on the ground. And watch again. The corner flag. Baramalua just misses with the timing. Well, you know, if Colorado can weather the sin bin this 10 minutes and only give up the five-pointer, or sorry, the seven-pointer to San Diego, it'll be a minor victory. That's another example of the rules of rugby, Brian. Uh, with the player's safety in mind, how many? as much as possible, rules and regulations six. around the contact and the tackle Five or six. Uh, to reduce Five. Five. the Come risk and incidence of injury. And it's tackling somebody in the air is discouraged you can't, you can't, you can't. as the Raptors find themselves now back up. Deep in San Diego territory. Big defense coming in. Doing well to stay on their feet and drive forward. Miss pass out to Ryberg. He puts his head down. Takes three defenders to put him to ground. Eventually another penalty to the Raptors. Back line. Never Offside onside. penalty against San Diego. Just got to mention Chad Goff. The playing hooker. You talk about big shoes to fill. The first hooker in the first year of the MLR was Dylan Fawcett, who now is the captain of captain. New York. And then five, Zach five. Finolio who's been the longtime hooker for this Raptor side, finally stepped away from the game. Both of them Thanks. great U.S. national team players in their own rights, and now Goff steps in to fill that hole, and he's so far been perfect in the lineout. It's good to see the former Utah Ute stepping up to fill those shoes. Good job, Chad Goff. Uh, that penalty given very close to the uprights, meaning Thomas Quinlan Guys, just step has back a somewhat just step back. easy task by his standards, at okay. least. And not only that, the team gets to take a, take a breath. You got Quinlan teeing one up. Time going off the clock, which helps only can help Fafita, who's sitting out the rest of his yellow card. <laughs> Kick Tom. Jimlin taking his time. <laughs> he was the referee saying, All right, you've milked it long enough, my man. And successful penalty attempt. Ten points to eight now in favor of the Legion as the players take their hydration break in the first quarter. We'll be back in just a minute. Don't go anywhere, folks. I think the training environment is what separates this place more than anything else. Um, I think that a little bit of there's like a team environment with a personalized training effect. So I think that's the problem with a lot of other places. It's one or the other. It's, you know, we, we're, you know, we're all together in this class, but there's no specificity with each person. Or it's only personal training, which really there's just no camaraderie. So this, this, this facility, the way we set it up, we try to get that team environment, that group camaraderie, along with a personalized, tailored program for your needs and, and your goals. Culture is just a massive thing here. Um, from person to person, you know, we'll have a 30-year-old athlete who's crushing a 300-pound deadlift right next to a, you know, 45-year-old woman who's just doing walking lunges, and you know, the cohesiveness between the two people um, really ties the whole gym together. as the players finish up their hydration break. We're going to chat with Jessamyn McIntyre on the sideline. Thanks, guys. And I'll tell you what, Kalepi Fafita is not happy in that sin bin. Two minutes left on that one. We know that Colorado is at a disadvantage, not only being only 14 men on the field, but they had to change their entire lineup, as you discussed, switching out six for 18. So they had to get that strong front row back in. But Fafita says that he is bringing the fire and the heat, baby, when he comes back in. He is champing at the bit, got those fresh legs. He's ready to make up for that mistake in the first half. Thanks, Jessamyn. Great to hear. You're inside down there, down in the pit with the players, getting the feeling and emotion. Did she say bring in the heat or bring in the hate? 
<laughs> either way. You decide. Either, either way, we're about to find out. Maybe a bit of both. That's what 10 minutes rest on the sideline can do. Exactly. We fire you up. Well, it does put you in a situation where you always feel like you let your team down, and when you come back on the field, it's actually kind of a dangerous time because you feel like you have to make it up to the team. You just got to stay disciplined. Ryberg takes the ball well. Brings it forward. Quinlan. Super boot from deep into his territory. Takes it over the halfway. Great kick from Quinlan. And that's such an advantage, Brian, when you have a man that can put that kind of kick with limited angle. When you're under pressure trying to fight your way out of the half, someone that can put the ball over the half halfway line is quite rare. Indeed. Take a look at the configuration here. Tavita Tamalau in the back line here. Here come the Legion. Plenty of space. Miss pass out wide allows the Raptors defense to drift across. Cover the final man. It made some yards though. The Legion. Oldsberger digs in. Finds Burton. Nonu comes in, fires a flat pass out to Totovasau. Dangerously close to the sideline. Manages to stay in. Mahoney with the dummy and go. Augsburger. Burton puts it behind again. That second wave attack. A feature of the Legion backline offense. And Orsley finds his way through. How did he do that? Dylan Orsley threads the needle and scores the try for the Legion. Uh, and one of the things that happens is Rene Ranger in defense comes up out of the line and he takes a gamble. He makes the hit, but the ball stays alive. Take a look once again. When Ranger flies up out of the line, right here, hits JP Duplessis, but the pass is already out of his hands. And so there's gaps in front of these Legion players and Audsley exploits that gap, goes over for the try. Former St. Mary's Gale, national champion. Audsley, he's a good one, a U.S. Eagle. He struggled through some injuries and is steadfastly rehabbed. And he's back and better than ever. And I tell you what, you talk about an embarrassment of riches in the back line department. Mikey Teo, who played fullback last week, now yields to Dylan Audsley. And still Joe Peterson waiting in the wings. Yeah, tell him. That's right, Brian. The competition that that creates within a squad is... Such an advantage <coughs> is afforded to the Legion. Perhaps that's reflected in their seven point lead at the moment. Can Burton extend that to nine points? Struck it extremely well, way over the top of the post, and the assistant referees like it. The flags go up. So San Diego extend their lead to 19 points to eight. Again, watch their team come up hard right there. How about Audley? He just goes into another gear. Great vision, loves to attack from that back three. The acceleration on that bounce pass that he cleaned up was sublime. a subtle detail but sometimes when that ball bounces the defense can tend to fall asleep for just a moment yeah trying to trying to watch the ball instead of the configuration of backs in front of them as you mentioned that's what dylan audsley took advantage of and he took off and he was only going in one direction as the legion now momentum swinging in their favor with another penalty Burton finds touch just shy of the halfway line. A little bit more breeze here today than yesterday, but I'm sure it's merciful to the players. A little bit of wind on that hot surface. 
Legion with their line out cleanly. Ball goes slightly behind Tamalau. He does well to bring it in. Halts his forward progress just enough as Wu Ching explodes onto a flat pass from Nonu. But Nonu steps in, zapping scrum half and finds Wu Ching again. Ball not knocked forward, it's still alive. Another penalty to the Legion. The yeah. Raptors need to be careful here. Just, just trying to be aggressive here. And Colorado player, you can see him reach out, grab the arm of Nate Augsburger as he's picking up the ball. And you got to give that halfback, the number nine, a chance to take the ball cleanly out of the base of the ruck. And that's what Derek Summers, the referee, has an issue with. In this last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, really gone the way of the Legion. Maybe 25 minutes gone in this match. We've already seen some champagne rugby. Augsburger drops it back on the inside. Clever little move from the Legion. But the Raptors are awake to it. Burton gets it away quickly. He does well under pressure. Furno can't find a way through. Holds on. Augsburger nearly finds a hole. Gets a clever offload away and keeps the progress moving forward as the Raptors are holding on Boyer flies through on his opposite number still with the ball the Legion big men lining up for a run close to the ruck just settling things down Wu Ching coming in as he does so well but he can't quite hang on and that's relief for the Raptors. Boyer shapes up. Does he pass? Does he kick? Doesn't need to. Yeah, Wu Ching right there, and this is a classic mistake. He goes through. It's a great line by Wu Ching. He misses the ball. Watch the line coming in. Great angle there to see Wu Ching. But the hand just comes in from the number seven. Michael Stewart strips it away. And now out of frustration, here comes Wu Ching to get involved, but he comes in from the side. It's so hard not, not to do that kind of thing. After, if he didn't lose that ball, Wu Ching would have been under the sticks, and he knows it. Well, again, it's worth mentioning the boot of Quinlan because got themselves a turnover just outside five meters from their line. And with that penalty kick, he's taken his team almost up to the 40-meter line of San Diego in one movement. And now a penalty in favor of the Raptors results in quick play, and it's intercepted by Tonovasau. Can he go the way he can't? Wow. Just pushing the envelope a little too hard. Well, the Raptors. We haven't seen Colorado's number eight, Sam Slade, get too much ball. Rene Ranger sees him out on the corner, and Save Totovasal just gets in the passing lane there, picks one clean from Ranger's cutout pass. Just telegraphs it. Totovasal's lucky if that ball floats over his head. It's probably a try going the other way. Good speed on defense to collapse and take down Totovasal. Nate Boyer gets caught awkwardly, which results in a turnover. Nonu can't hold on. But they're going to play advantage. Come back to the original knock-on by Colorado. So again, dangerous territory for the Raptors. You know, a lot of people talking about signing these big-name players and whether it's meaningful or not, whether it's worth the gamble. But I tell you what, to see two former all-black centers facing off here in the MLR, it's, it's a sight to behold. You gotta appreciate it. Rene Ranger going up against Ma'anonu in the centers. It's certainly wonderful for the league, Brian. The players of that stature choosing to come and play in this competition, deeming it good enough. And what's even better is the players around them, the young, 
up and coming future Eagles have the chance to play alongside and learn. As the Legion now and Nonu straight through and off the right foot, easy as you like for his first try of the season. Ma Nonu extends the lead of the Legion. Any questions about whether the old man still's got a bag of tricks? Look at the step, just breaks the ankles of the defender in front of him. Looks like he's going to go inside and then just steps off the right. And just taking this ball, I'm not even sure this ball was intended for Nanu. The step there, thing of beauty. Body going one way, dreadlocks going the other. Well, as you said, we weren't sure if that was even intended, and if it was, that's a testament to that planned move by the Legion, just players running all sorts of angles right up close to the defensive line. It makes it nearly impossible to anticipate who is gonna get the ball. There's Nonu on that occasion. No one in front of him on the front line of defense, and then one to beat. And you'd have to back the All Black of 103 test matches to win that battle to the try line and Burton adds the extras with no problem at all. So the score now in this first half, 24 points to eight. Just picks the ball clean out of the air. A little swerve, nothing to it. Probably noticed from that angle there, JP Duplessis coming back on the angle and they effectively swapped roles. Duplessis created enough attention to leave Nonu unmarked as the Legion playing with their tails up, playing with pace. Wu Ching, so strong in the tackle. Wolfsburg is there quickly. Nonu drops it on the right foot. Find some space. Colorado bringing it back. Holding on. Quinlan. To London. Boyer's there. It's better play from the Raptors. Cycling the ball quickly. Quinlan sending it high into the sun. Oh, that's nearly taken by Cruze. With what looked like an open try line in front. But it's the Legion that have come up with it and have won themselves a penalty. The ill-discipline is killing the Raptors at the moment. <laughs> Offside the hook. Little foreign relations there. Josh Ferno, the Australian born Italian. Let's take a look once again here. Quinlan with a big, huge boot. Line here. Blue line. And then almost in the hands of Crusade. Get on the line. And if he takes that ball down, Mark, it, it's possible that it's clear sailing for him to the try line. Thin margins Seven, you can match. in this game. Seven, you can match. Hold the throw. You can okay, we're good. Bright rugby future ahead of him, only 21 years of age. Furno juggles that one and loses it. That's four on scrum. Onto the Raptors side and we'll come back for that knock on. Raptors to feed. Right 
Let's go, fellas. And a reminder of how these two teams come into this match after round one. The Raptors Outside. suffering a loss away to the Sabercats of Houston. 21 points to 12. Legion, on the other hand, affecting revenge against defending champion Seattle at home after losing in the final in heartbreaking fashion. They've won their first match against them, 33 points to 24. Penalty to the Legion as they continue that form. Yeah, trouble at scrum time, and this is the matchup we looked at before. Trouble for Fafita. And Kalepi Fafita getting a clinic today from Paul Mullen, who's wearing the three jersey for San Diego. Just so difficult. Mullen, the international prop for the U.S. Irish born, but has been in the United States for a long time. And knows all about the dark arts of the front row. Bruno takes that one cleanly, setting up the driving mall. Here is the menacing That's figure one. of a collective legion shoving, driving toward and over. Too strong, too good. The legion streak ahead. And it's Dean Weir, the hooker. He had two last week against Seattle in the same fashion, getting in the back of that mall. Straight off the line out. A little claret coming from the side of the ear. Sorry. Sorry. Great camera angle there as you see Moyer tucked in. Augsburger yeah. hitching to the back for a ride, a little push forward. Okay. Just under five minutes until half time. I'm sure that head coach of the Raptors, Pete Borlace, front row forward himself, also has the benefit of Luke Gross, USA. Rugby legend, plenty of professional rugby experience and international experience. We'll be having words to the forward pack. Figuring out how they can stop this red and black machine. And Burton again adds the extras. 31 points to eight to the Legion. Classic forwards try here. Dominant Mall, so hard to stop like a train rolling downhill. So Quinlan sends it deep. Nanu under pressure. He's coughed it up. Not gone. That was a great restart. Thank you. Putting it high and long enough. So his chasing players could contest. They put the pressure on Nonu. This is actually exactly what they need to hit back immediately and gain some confidence going into the dressing room at half time. Yeah, I think they've been going for home runs and, and they need to start hitting, hitting some singles and doubles. By that, what I mean is just go through some phases, have some positive runners picking up some go forward ball build something instead of trying to get it all back at once. We've seen a few big cutout passes. Maybe asking a little too much. Boyer passes to no one. Ranger has to come in, clean things up, gets out of the first tackler. Can't evade the second as the Raptors lose some ground from the scrum. Boyer. Liai. Quinlan dropped it to London. Quinlan flat, maybe a little too flat. Referee says it was okay, he was right on the spot. Luke White wrestled to the ground. Ball spits out. Boyer, pirouettes, gets it away cleverly. It was too hard to. A... And just trying again, trying to do a little bit too much. Boyer tries to free his hands and he. 
flings one to Fafita, but Fafita at this point has already made up his mind to go in and support the ruck. Doesn't expect the ball coming. Right there, another look at it. Well, as you said, Brian, that might be another example of trying to hit a home run. <laughs> trying to pull, force the pass, get rid of it, do something with it quickly. Still a little bit of time just to build up and build up and wait to strike when the time is right. But instead, Keep working. Keep working. panic Keep working. passes like that while in the tackle. Crouch. Make it extremely hard. Fine. Boy, are certainly doing everything he can. Hold it up, hold it up. It's his it former team as Augsburger gets it out to Burton. For some reason, Duplessis leaves without it. Still in possession, Legion. Augsburger sends it high and deep. Emerson has a run himself. He's got some numbers. Ranger over the top, beautiful pass. Finds Goff. Maybe he wanted to find someone with slightly quicker wheels, but Goff's done well. Great job also by Goff to plant off of the touchline, come back inside, not get forced out. Now the penalty. Just a minute left in this first half, and you get this ball tight to the five-meter line here. Have a line out. It's a good kick, good amount of territory there take a look once again the pass from Emerson and then Goff watch him step control himself flick it back inside great job support there from Colorado now they got a chance to return the favor hold on listen I've asked you to communicate numbers to me if you're gonna do it late then we're gonna have an issue we went five. Give me, give me a clear, okay? Five. Let them match. Yeah. Five boys, yeah. Hold the gap, Brad. Hold. Yeah, yeah. Just stand A little trickeration in the line out. Three Summers and Luke White struggling to get on the same page. As the Raptors now bring it down and drive, it comes loose now, and they're coming back the other way. Boyer. Just what the Raptors needed, right on half time. You have a change of direction there, Brian. Yeah, and it was a, a great set play from the line out. You could see him stretching way back where the throw went 15 meters away from the touch line. And they're purposefully trying to drag San Diego's defense into thinking that they're going to maul. Instead, the ball comes back weak side. Boyer has Ryberg just in case he can't find a gap on his own. And now watch this clever play. Back to the other side. Boyer, Ryberg, Boyer keeps it. That's a huge try for Colorado before the break. Everything was going downhill for San Diego. Just when things were starting to unravel for the Raptors, they get one back. It's a good way to go into halftime. Just the psychology of going in double figures on the scoreboard as opposed to the single figure of only eight, which they'd been stuck on for so long in that first half. Quinlan lays a sharp boot, sends it through the uprights and adds the extras. So they trail 31 points to 15. They have the last say in this first half. But the Legion still with a commanding lead. You see there, Nick Boyer gets his team back in the race. Don't go anywhere, folks, as we will be back after the break in just a minute.
think the training environment is what separates this place more than anything else. Um, I think that a little bit of, there's like a team environment with a personalized training effect. So I think that's the problem with a lot of other places, it's one or the other. It's, you know, we, we're, you know, we're all together in this class, but there's no specificity with each person, or it's only personal training, which really there's just no camaraderie. So this, this, this facility, the way we set it up, we try to get that team environment, that group camaraderie, along with a personalized, tailored program for your needs and, and your goals. Culture is just a massive thing here. Um, from person to person, you know, we'll have a 30-year-old athlete who's crushing a 300-pound deadlift right next to a, you know, 45-year-old woman who's just doing walking lunges, and you know, the cohesiveness between the two people um, really ties the whole gym together. Rugby fans, rugby is everywhere. The giant is awakening, and rugby wrap up is there with the alarm clock. Rugby wrap up, global rugby coverage, sometimes with a wink. Weekly studio shows, daily website content, breaking news, evolving stories, the biggest names in the game on camera, all over social media. Pundits from all corners of the planet, local, global, professional, amateur, female, and male. Find it all on rugbywrapup.com. Welcome back, and this broadcast is brought to you by Bud Light Seltzer. If you love Bud Light, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. If you don't love Bud Light, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. And Encinitas BMW, your go-to destination for all things BMW. And Sharp Business Systems. Transfer the day-to-day -day management of your network and print operations over to Sharp Business Systems. And we're back here in Las Vegas, San Diego lead 31 points to Colorado, who fought back just before halftime with 15. And we have Jessman McIntyre down there on the sideline with Legion coach Rob Hoadley. Thanks, guys. Coach, thanks so much for your time, first of all. You had a pretty dominant first half. A little disappointing to give up that try right there at the end. What do you do to continue their dominance in that second half? Yeah, I think we've just got to keep uh, playing to the strengths uh, that we've created in the first half. Obviously, we scored three tri tries from first phase from a line-out drive, scrum penalty try, and then uh, Mars first try. Uh, and I think we've got to be a bit more clinical for further out on the pitch. We're winning collisions. Uh, we scored Dylan's. Uh, Dylan scored a good try after six phases, but I think we can do a bit more from further out. You're certainly taking advantage of the miscues on Colorado's side of the ball. What do you do to stay so disciplined on your side? We've just got to stick to our structure. Um, and I think, uh, you know, we want to play from a bit, bit of width from further out, play tight when we get to the line, and I think we can have success doing that. What's your message to your team when you head into that locker room right now? Um, I think we've got to exit a little bit better. We've got to tidy up uh, from our zone, and uh, we've got to tighten up on defense as well to, to not allow any further slips. Thanks so much for your time. Good luck. Thanks, Jess. And thank you, Jessamine. And Rob, set up for an exciting 40 minutes coming up. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back just after the break.
think the training environment is what separates this place more than anything else. Um, I think that a little bit of, there's like a team environment with a personalized training effect. So I think that's the problem with a lot of other places, it's one or the other. It's, you know, we, we're, you know, we're all together in this class, but there's no specificity with each person, or it's only personal training, which really there's just no camaraderie. So this, this, this facility, the way we set it up, we try to get that team environment, that group camaraderie, along with a personalized, tailored program for your needs and, and your goals. Culture is just a massive thing here. Um, from person to person, you know, we'll have a 30-year-old athlete who's crushing a 300-pound deadlift right next to a, you know, a 45-year-old woman who's just doing walking lunges, and you know, the cohesiveness between the two people um, really ties the whole gym together. Rugby fans, rugby is everywhere. The giant is awakening, and rugby wrap up is there with the alarm clock. Rugby wrap up, global rugby coverage, sometimes with a wake. Weekly studio shows, daily website content, breaking news, evolving stories, the biggest names in the game on camera, all over social media. Pundits from all corners of the planet, local, global, professional, amateur, female, and male. Find it all on rugbywrapup.com. Welcome back, viewers. San Diego leads 31 points to 15 over Colorado. And we're going to go straight down to Jessamyn McIntyre with a very important guest. Very important indeed. I'm standing by with Gary Gold of USA Rugby. Thank you so much for your time. I wanted to ask you what your observations of Major League Rugby has been since we're in our third season right now. From a USA standpoint, what has it done for the sport? Uh, it's, it's been absolutely outstanding. I mean, I can't believe the, the level of improvement just over the three-year period as well. The quality of the games is, is really close. We've seen it from the results from this weekend as well. Um, you know, just the, the, the last game that finished in Washington, for example, where they narrowly beat the, the current champions. So it's fantastic to see that the new teams coming into the league are as well coached, as, as competitive as the, as the existing teams. And uh, it's, it makes for a fantastic competition and it means the level of the game is really high as well. We see some great international signings just today. We see Ma'a Nanu facing off against Rennie Ranger. What do international players bring to those who are growing in the sport within rugby here? Well, I mean, the, the two guys that are playing here are obviously, you know, seasoned veterans, both All Blacks. You see Beastie playing down in, in Washington as well. And, you know, when these guys are coming and they're still at the top of their game, it makes a huge difference. The influence that they have around to the current, the younger players, uh, their experience in the field, the calm heads that they bring, it's just, it, it just makes a world of difference to the other guys who are relatively novice in, at, at playing at this level of the game. So it makes a huge difference and they, they add tremendous value and it's just brilliant for the league. Now I know you have World Cup on the brain as does everyone who plays rugby uh, for the United States. What would that mean to put the United States on more of a national match uh, map known as a, an actual rugby country? Yeah, you know, the, the MLR is absolutely amazing. I think it's going to go from strength to strength, but the, the real cherry on the cake is going to have to be that we'd really like a World Cup, you know. 2027, ideally, um, the league is so well set up, it's, it's getting better run week in and week out. Um, hopefully, we're going to improve as a national team. I know we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best in the world, and, you know, the game-changer for us would be that World Rugby gives us the Rugby World Cup in 2027. Well, we'll be rooting for you right here. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the match. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much, uh, Gary Gold and Jessamine. We're going to go to another break. But don't go too far, folks. We are moments away from second half action here in Las Vegas.
think the training environment is what separates this place more than anything else. Um, I think that a little bit of, there's like a team environment with a personalized training effect. So I think that's the problem with a lot of other places, it's one or the other. It's, you know, we, we're, you know, we're all together in this class, but there's no specificity with each person. Or it's only personal training, which really there's just no camaraderie. So this, this, this facility, the way we set it up, we try to get that team environment, that group camaraderie, along with a personalized, tailored program for your needs and, and your goals. Culture is just a massive thing here, um, from person to person. You know, we'll have a 30-year-old athlete who's crushing a 300-pound deadlift right next to a you know 45-year-old woman who's just doing walking lunges, and you know the cohesiveness between the two people um, really ties the whole gym together. Rugby fans, rugby is everywhere. The giant is awakening, and rugby wrap up is there with the alarm clock. Rugby wrap up, global rugby coverage, sometimes with a wink. Weekly studio shows, daily website content, breaking news, evolving stories, the biggest names in the game on camera, all over social media. Pundits from all corners of the planet, local, global, professional, amateur, female, and male. Find it all on rugbywrapup.com. And welcome back to Sam Boyd Stadium here in Las Vegas. It's halftime and coming into the second half, we're moments away from kickoff. San Diego lead the Colorado Raptors. And speaking of the Raptors, we have Jessamyn McIntyre with one of the Raptors coaches. Thanks guys, standing by with Coach Borlase. Obviously that try really gave you some momentum right there at the end of the first half. How can you carry it into the second? Yeah, obviously how we come out of the shears now is really important. The first five minutes, you know, we, we need to be the first to score and plain and simple, otherwise this game's gonna go away on us. And it was nice to come away with a, 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 bit, of, a bit of reward at the back end of the first half. A couple of penalties in that first half. How do you clean things up in the second? Well, I mean, we're, we're getting down into their half and then we're just transferring that, you know, we're relieving that pressure, you know. We're not relieving that pressure, you know. We're not getting the ball back, um, up tempo and up speeding the game and, and, and crushing us really in our, in our red zone. All right, well, we'll see what you can do in the second half. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Jessamyn and Pete Borles. And this broadcast is brought to you by Bud Light Seltzer. If you love Bud Light, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. If you don't love Bud Light, you'll love Bud Light Seltzer. Also, Encinitas BMW, your go-to destination for all things BMW. And Sharp Business Systems, transfer the day-to-day -day management of your network and print operations over to Sharp Business Systems. Let's have a look at the highlights from the first half, Brian. Yeah, first crack was Mason Emerson. There's Cruzet. And just dishes to the number 15, Emerson from New Zealand. Gets one down to kick things off for Colorado. But then San Diego answers back. Penalty try. Just the pressure right after a yellow card against the loose head prop for the Raptors. But then Quinlan with the penalty kick. Colorado still in it. Then things start to open up. Audsley takes the ball, dummies outside, and then just beats four men to the try line. Audsley, great individual try there. A piece of brilliance. And then watch Ma'a Nanu grab the ball out of thin air. Boom! And then steps off the right. Boom! Mason Emerson, wrong-footed there. And Nanu in for another one. And then not done yet. It's Dean Weir. Third try in two weeks for the hooker from South Africa. Colorado needing some points before halftime. A great set piece move from the line out. Watch him go to the midfield and then come back to the weak side. Watch Nick Boyer, got options on the outside, doesn't need him, splits the defense and gives some hope to the Raptors just when they need it. A good look at the reserves coming in from both sides and these benches will be instrumental to the end of this match the five and two configuration for San Diego a lot of faith in their backs and knowing 
that they need to turn those forwards back over and some exciting young players as well for the Raptors and some old old players in the form of Atta Malifa, still evergreen. And will we see one of the sneaky Malifas back for Colorado once again to add a spark in the second half? Speaking of the second half, we are merely seconds from kickoff. And it'll be Thomas Quinlan of the Raptors to get things underway. Sends it down to Tira Patterson. Ball is over the 22, but brought back in and passed back. So this ball needs to stay in play, and it will. Well taken by Slade. And now it's shifted out to the far left side, over the top pass. Finds its mark. Brilliant counterattack by the Raptors as Luke White comes in with gusto. Strong Legion defense. Comes up and meets the Raptors at the tackle line. Nearly at the 40 meters of the Legion. Boya looks right, looks left, decides to come to this open side. London's put down heavily marked player. He's been a force over the years here in this competition. It's onside, it was tapped, so Berno will continue the play. Ball goes to ground, spins out of the tackle well. That was Mitchell. Wu Ching. Tackled well. Now Nonu finds Audsley. Try scorer. He's thrown down. And that tackle was a little high on Audsley there. Looked like the number six, Michael Curry. Guilty of going a little bit too far north on the neck of Dylan Audsley. And interesting, straight out of the gates in the second half, you got an entire new front row for San Diego. It's Peter Malcolm at hooker, Nathan Sylvia at loose head, and Aaron Mitchell at tight head. Great faith Coach Rob Hoadley has in this replacement front row and giving them equal time to show what they can do here in Vegas. So the Legion with the line-out throw. Win the ball, Augsburger loses it forwards and White charges onto it. As Boyer comes in under pressure and take the original knock on. Let's go boys, come on, first big hit, let's go. Well, we talked about some of the ball carriers for the San Diego side, but Luke White, one of the best at get, getting the ball and finding space and somehow, even with players wrapped around him, always gets some go forward. Figures out a way to get positive meters. Always key to the success of this Raptor team. Luke White, the Sydney Sider from Australia. Former shot put champion. This is no surprise. Look at the size of the man. It's a short arm penalty. Ran into Luke White on the East Coast this fall. I was there to do some work with the World Cup. Went to the Yale Harvard game. And who was coaching Harvard? Luke White. Can do anything. This man, the ball is sent high from Quinlan and taken by Burton. And now Audsley struggles to get to the ground. He does it successfully. Clever offload behind the defense. Wu Ching, a little panicked, tries to flick that out the back door. It's a good idea from Wu Ching, just a little bit too much smoke on that ball. Trying to get it into the hands of the dangerous wing, Save Totovasal. Please get him on top, please. Hey, watch front. Hey, watch front, watch front. The Raptors now did not look straight. It's not straight. They're going to play it bad, but they killed it. So, what do you Every want? Summers agrees with me. Anytime you see 
a forward go up in the line out and touch the ball with his outside arm. Referee is going to call that every time because you can't disguise a straight throw if you can't even reach it with your inside arm. Just hold off. Second row, just hold off the pressure on the calls here. Okay, thank you. Let's go. Let's go, watching eight, man. So the Legion now with the feed. Watching straight up the base. Colorado really need to make the most of every opportunity. They are to fight their way back into this game. Started with plenty of energy. It's gone down. You can see the Legion perhaps in a period of confidence could lead into complacency as you saw with Wu Ching flicking the ball around why not they have a handy lead but it can also be dangerous in Colorado need to be squeaky clean with their discipline and patient with ball in hand Right now, they will need to defend as the Legion charge forward. Scrum penalty. Well, that's got to be exciting for Coach Rob Holdley. Wholesale changes in the front row and a penalty in their first put in. I understand that, but we're get, we got the same picture that we had in the first half. Your elbows down, your feet, are, feet, are too, feet are too far back, okay? Get two penalties on you. You are on a yellow card. So we so we fixed it in the end of last last half. They've got new fixes. Interesting discussion there, and it's Fafita. He's pleading his case. He already got a yellow card. He's frustrated. He's had a few penalties in the scrum. Summers is warning him that he's already got a yellow. If two yellows equals a red in rugby, and so Fafita wants to avoid getting another penalty at scrum time. The referee said he's dropped his elbow. Six, six, six. In effect, if you drop your elbow, it tells the referee you're the one bringing the scrum down. Wu Ching brings it down for the Legion. That's one, that's one. And they look to drive. Comes out for Burton. Coming in off the wing. Is sort of a sow. Furno juggles, can't hold on to it. Ball bobbles around, eventually ends up with Audsley. He puts the head down. Great support coming in to recycle possession. Ten allow. Interesting, too, of note the substitution in the back line for the Raptors. Rene Ranger out, Robbie Petzer in. Tackled by Cruze up wide. It's a big blow for Colorado. Let's hope that Rangers are okay. No, he's just coming back from a recent ACL injury to his knee. Lou Stanfield in wearing the number 20 for San Diego. He said he played 30 minutes last week and felt like 80. Good kick from the Raptors. Just a little too long. And the fact that it went over the dead ball line means it'll come all the way back for a scrum. So that's a mistake. Lack of judgment. Just come here. A little too much mojo on that ball. And on the turf, it's super right quick out there. And if it just starts to roll the right way, it carries. It looked like that ball had that kind of potential that it could have sat up a little bit, Mark, but then the it just side, took that rotation okay, she's straight in <laughs> to the dead ball area. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. That ball was on its way to the strip. Feet under you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crouch. And now ball back for the feed Fine. of Augsburger. Solid base. Let's go. Now, third and Nanu. And easily picked off by Cruze. This could be the turning point that they need. Mika Cruze had his eye on Ma'anonu's pass. And that will be as easy a try as he will score. Uh, that's just studying last week's game film. 
Nanu last week, we saw it in San Diego, Mark, a couple of great cutout passes, just precision. But Cruze takes a shot here. The gamble pays off. He reads it perfectly. It's going to Audsley. At least it seems so to Nanu. But that blue shirt steps in the way. Mika Cruze, one to watch. He just seems to get better and better with age. Still a youngster. Cruze came into the league as a teenager just a couple of years ago. He's a good one. Native born, Colorado, Mika Cruze. Great pick. You talk about adding a boost when your team needs one. That is relief. Well, that was a classic backline play from the 70s there. Brian, the 10 to 12 missed pass to 15. When executed well, it is deadly on this occasion. Anticipated perfectly. That man in question takes the ball. Under pressure now, you see the Legion just piling in the defense, trying to keep this Raptors team camped. Quinlan doesn't find touch. Burton will bring it back and counterattack. He's met heavily. Still on his feet. Now the support comes in to drive him. Oh, it's extra few yards. Wu Ching. With the Raptors now early tackle. have him heavily marked. Early, early tackle. Didn't have the ball. Go 10, please. Go 10. So Derek Summers saying that Wu Ching was tackled before he had the ball in hand, and he can't make contact with the runner before he receives the ball. What are we doing, Red? Okay. Let's take a look one more time. Watch the number seven. And the question is, is he getting contact before the ball? And it's a tight call from Summers. But he's definitive. Good look at Aaron Mitchell there. You talk about getting go forward. That number 18 keeps getting better. Former Fresno State offensive lineman. This is dangerous for the Raptors now. As the Legion have scored from this very move, and they are close to the line. They may be over. They're just short. One forward. So it'll come back. No try. When you get the pile of bodies and it's not going anywhere, and sometimes the way that arms and legs are interlaced, the ball just can't come out. So as a result, the team moving forward is the one in red. So that's why they get the scrum. Saw this yesterday, a scrum so close. What's going through your mind with your Petsa right now? Quinlan, you're standing opposite, fired up back line in red and black. One of those players has 103 games and two World Cups for New Zealand. Well, it may never get out to those players because <laughs> That's the, right. the forwards really Different prop. Different prop. have been having their way with the Colorado pack today. And this is a huge scrum for Colorado across the front. Still no changes. Actually, there is one change. Looks like Fafita's out. Here we go. Look at the Legionnaires. I see some traveling fans from San Diego. Great to see the cohort. And there's also a spectator party at the team's restaurant, Park 101 in Carlsbad. Shout out to the San Diego supporters watching there. Mark 101 feeds the players in the week as well. And they are look, looking well nourished out there at the moment. San Diego as they have a scrum five meters out. It looks like it'll come out. Augsburger has no option but to just take that ball and take the tackle. He's still on his feet. Colorado will need to hold him up. And they've done that and have turned it over. Well, they've got the smallest man on the field. 
with the ball. That's Nate Augsburger. No one's up to the ball, the ball's out, okay? Play. And because they stand him up, he can't work his way to the ground, so the tackle never happens. And because you take the ball into a mall and you can't bring it back and recycle it, it's the defense who wins it back, and that is clutch come for here. the Raptors. Come up. Come, up. come up to the five. Nine points down and here, looking at yeah. even yeah. bigger deficit okay. if San Diego were able to take points. Not out of the woods yet, still backed up against their line. They'll need a good kick here, potentially from Quinlan. Quinlan's exactly the man you want to get you out of this territory and relieve some pressure. It's been all San Diego in this last five or so minutes. It's batted down. Which equals a knock on. So we'll come back. Reset. Same scrum in the same spot. Well, Nathan Sylvia's pumped up. Loose head prop wearing the number 17. And right now, this front row from San Diego smells blood. They're young, but they're talented. Here we go. Crouch. Fine. The Raptors to feed. Free kick. Engage. And that's a free kick, so. Other changes for free Colorado. Kick. Looks like Nick Boyer's moved to the wing, and Carlo Donation has come in at scrum half. <laughs> Quinlan unable to find his okay, usual hold distance hold on that kick. Hold him, yeah, but the relief is good. And, and at least they're out at the 22-meter line instead of their five. They got to come up, put some line speed on this San Diego attack. Try to put some pressure. No, no, no. Too much movement. Too much movement. We're going to call again. You guys are closing the gap. They're moving in. Josh, we got to get stable. Well, the rep is getting antsy there. Start moving around, yeah? Come in and set. Come you on, can set. Yeah, back. it's okay. a, tri a tricky throw there. It's going to go five go to a five meter Fine. throw. It's a Use short line, throw. Please. Lots of different angles and lots of dummy runners and trying to confuse Colorado, but it results in just a mess. Inferno brings it down, but it bubbles around. Eight, eight on the arm. Oh, That's the number eight. Penalty, so eight the, the ill-discipline continues from the Raptors. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes you can get away with it, and sometimes you can't when it's obvious yeah, to the referee, the and usually the, the spotlight is on the jumper, and so anybody who interferes with his ability to catch is going to be in the spotlight as well. So it'll be Luke Burton to put some more distance between these two teams on the scoreboard. Okay, we'll have it now. This will give the Legion 12-point buffer. The Australian normally doesn't make any mistakes from this range. Opportunity for the Raptors to regroup. But for three points. And he's done it. 34 points to 22. As the players now will take another water break to end the third quarter. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back in about 60 seconds. You close the gap. When you see it, you close it. Hold that gap and off. I think the training environment is what separates this place more than anything else. Um, I think that a little bit of, there's like a team environment with a personalized training effect. So I think that's the problem with a lot of other places, it's one or the other. 
it's you know, we, we're, you know, we're all together in this class, but there's no specificity with each person, or it's only personal training, which really there's just no camaraderie. So this, this, this facility, the way we set it up, we try to get that team environment, that group camaraderie, along with a personalized, tailored program for your needs and, and your goals. Culture is just a massive thing here. Um, from person to person, you know, we'll have a 30-year-old athlete who's crushing a 300-pound deadlift right next to a, you know, 45-year-old woman who's just doing walking lunges and, you know, the cohesiveness between the two people um, really ties the whole gym together. Welcome back, viewers. Still players having a hydration break before the fourth and final quarter here. And we have Jessamyn McIntyre down the sideline with Dean Muir. Indeed I do. A late first half try in the hands of Dean Muir. Just tell me what you were seeing on that play. You guys were pretty dominant out there. Yeah, so we, we, have, a, we have a good mall. Um, I, I scored the try. Uh, it goes to all eight of us. I just gave my name on the scorecard. I mean, all eight are putting in the work. I'm at the back. I just thought the ball down pretty easy, yeah. Oh, we got a new front line in there. They're young, they're hungry. Tell me about the young guys getting some playing time right now. Uh, we got Nate, um, Nate Sylvia, Aaron Mitchell, and Pete Malcolm. All, all of them could be starting in any MLR team. And I mean, for like them coming on, the standard doesn't drop. It only gets better. So yeah, they, they, they're going to take it through to the end of this game. I know we do have 20 minutes left. Sorry, I can't call this one in the books. But you guys are ahead right now. You won last week in your redemption match. Tell me how this season is going for San Diego. Well, it's going, it's going as planned. I mean, um, we, well, I'm not gonna, we still got 20 minutes left, but we're looking pretty good. We won last week, and we just want to keep uh, building on that full momentum through the season. Good luck in the last 20. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Jessamyn and Dean. Always nice to hear players singing the praises of their replacement. Yeah, this might turn into a pretty good series for Colorado. Now, they just withstood San Diego's attack, and San Diego got three, but they didn't get a try, and now a mistake by Burton fielding the ball, and it's a scrum. This has been a problem for Colorado all day against San Diego, but if they can win quick ball here through the scrum, get a few phases, put one over the line, they're right back in this, Mark. Not even 60 minutes gone, and the Raptors find themselves up to almost 10 meters out from the try line, trailing by 12. As Brian mentioned, they're only two scores away. Good gap, good gap. And they have the players to strike. Boyer coming in from his left wing. Had a lot of success there for the Legion last season. And they're not going to do it like that, the Raptors. Yeah, clearly in front. So not only was that a knock on, but it went back into a Raptors hands in front of the man, mean, meaning it was offside. Yeah, and it's just an unkind pass there to Petzer. It's a nice way to put it, Brian. And you got to be clinical. This is the kind of thing where Colorado, as it grows, is not going to make this kind of mistake. They've had some opportunities that they couldn't capitalize on in the first 60 minutes of this game. Just hold it here, Pete. Hold it for something. Looks like Connor oh, Cook coming on for the Raptors. Coming into the game. Yeah, wholesale changes now for both teams. Emptying those benches. The Legion just a little too high and long, and Cook just come on the field, gets his first touch. Comes back against the grain. Some space there. Quinlan finds it. Audsley has to scurry over. He does well. Shapes up. Comes a little off the side of the boot. He'll go straight back to Quinlan. Fires it infield. Boyer. He comes back. But the tackle from Audsley. Chasing his own kick. And the penalty as well. What a play by Dylan Audsley. Oh, that's indecision by Nick Boyer. And he started to go into the open side of the field and cuts back, but Audsley's not fooled and a great chase. Watch the kick and then Audsley on the chase here. Just nails Nick Boyer, his former teammate just drops him. Now Boyer on the ground, he won't let go and it's Lou Stanfield, the wily old veteran 
on the job. Long distance for Burton, but he's been striking the ball well. It was indecision by Nick Boyer, but I'm sure he would have liked his support players to get back a lot quicker and behind him so that he could use that width and space. But as he looked up, the players weren't quite in position. That's what caused his hesitation. Played right into the hands of Audsley. Unfortunately for the Raptors, it's within kicking range. With a man like Luke Burton, it is a likely three points. Burton strikes it cleanly and through the posts. So again, the Legion capitalizing on those penalties from the Raptors, 37 points to 22. Still plenty of time. That's a big point swing, momentum swing as well. That's right, and that extra point buffer, 15 points clear means Colorado need to score three times. Two converted tries will only get them within a point behind. So they need to get busy scoring. Good clearance by Burton, almost up to the 10 meter line. Short line out for and Luke, Luke right. White here in standing in the midfield. Look for him to be potentially a strike runner. Oh, that ball bobbles around. It's not taken cleanly and they are marched back five or so meters. Forced to start again. So whatever play they had planned for the line out has been thwarted. Up to the halfway, the Raptors. Switch play with White coming in. And that's the way to tackle the big man. Around the ankles. My under sixes rugby coach always told me they can't run without legs, Brian. <laughs> it's true. That ball goes high into the 22. That's well taken under pressure. Boyer was right there to make the tackle. Oh, balls up, balls up, balls up, balls up. Turnover, no. Lost forward in the contest. Uh, even after winning one, bounce the ball unkind to Colorado. You know, it's been really a game without much continuity, especially in this second half. We talk about playing to a, a, a certain structure, and neither one of these teams able to really kind of put down their pattern. And you can expect to see that happen at the very start of the season. Devereaux Ferris in at scrum half. Nate Augsburger takes a spot on the wings for Tira Patterson. You stand on that side. Time off. Just both of you come in. Just both of you come in. Both of you. Let's have a listen to referee Derek Summers. I know you came on at halftime. Continue to do the basics. Feet under you, elbows up. You understand? Yeah? Yep. Time back on. Just lecturing his front row forwards. And it's a... Interesting conversation there. The young Aaron Mitchell and the wise, aged Sakaria Talafo. 44 caps for Samoa. And bounce. Fine. Ferris to feed. Straight down. Another scrum penalty straight down. The front row of Colorado. Go Tanner, I'll march again. Thank you. Frustration setting in also. They know they're running out of time here. No, he's hinging straight down. And Aaron Mitchell, you know, he's he's one of those 
300 pound bodies that's at the disposal of this Legion attack. Just getting better and better. And under the tutelage of Patty Ryan, the Australian last year, who was the best tight head in the league, and Mitchell seems to have learned a lot. Finally, the Legion back line gets some action, and that will be a try. Will it? Augsburger comes in to finish it off, but the lead up play was superb from JP Duplessis. Sending the number nine, galloping down the sideline. Well, Augsburger, he's most comfortable at scrum half, but he's also played wing for the U.S. team as well. Just what, the kind of player you want to have on the field. J.P. Duplessis just stands up Mason Emerson so nicely. The cutback by Augsburger is sublime. Such a great line, just trusting that space. He didn't have a whole lot to work with on that blindside edge. But he, he trusted J.P. Duplessis to do his job, and Duplessis doesn't disappoint. Well, that was textbook stuff from J.P. after he had plenty of work to do to make that break, and then he was faced with a decision, 2v1. You talk to people about Nate Augsburger, Coach Gary Gold, Coach Rob Hoadley for San Diego, and they'll both tell you, that he's the kind of player that you just want on your team. He makes the team better just by virtue of being on the roster, whether he's playing or not. And that's the kind of kid that Augsburger has a reputation of. Such value. Wow, Luke. And he's a pretty Luke. good, he's a pretty good rugby player. Tally. Luke, Mark. Absolutely. Let's take another look here, Brian. And watch Duplessis in the 13 shirt. This, they miss Ma'ananu, and then London can't get his hands on Duplessis. The streaking line by Augsburger, who smartly stays home and does his job. So Boya comes screaming across, and he had a 5% chance of making that tackle. It's always hard. Well, there, last foot, last foot. No, leave it, leave it. In that situation, but the Legion now with Burton. Manage over from the try zone, sends it up over the 40 meter line. Great clearance kick from Burton. Well, and this is the comfort zone. We've seen this. Colorado kicks deep to Burton. Burton gives the clearance here. kick. Here, And the Raptors now have another attempt at that line-out move. Once again, unable to capitalize. They've turned it over. See the Legion looking strong. Oh, plenty of numbers straight through from the pass behind. Back on the inside to Nonu, and Augsburger might get another. He sends it back to Duplessis, returns the favor of the try before. JP Duplessis scores for the Legion. And they are racing away with this game. Felt like the entire team got their hands on the ball there, yeah, Brian. indeed, it all started with the blindside wing. Save Totovasau comes in to get a little bit of the action, and he starts things off, and he looks back inside, I don't have gives that, a little no. bit of a ball waggle, and finally finds Nanu. Watch this interplay again. Hard line from Totovasau off the corner, back inside to Nanu, and then Augsburger, great defense coming across, but Duplessis is one more option for Augsburger as he's getting taken into touch. Too many red shirts on scene. Everything moving downhill right now for the men in red. They talked about opening things up last week in their first game. Mark, that was kind of their mantra. We want to play some open running rugby. Mix it up, have some fun, and that's exactly what they're doing today at the expense of this Raptor team. So 
Central Legion certainly showing their class. And their relentless rugby all the way to the final whistle. Burton, well, he is human after all. Just misses that to the left. So unable to add the extras. How about Duplessis? You know, such a great exponent for this San Diego team. Normally just cleaning it up on defense, but you see in the last two possessions how clinical he can be in attack as well. Legion. Rolling, rolling, rolling their way up to the 40-meter line. Still going, and it will be a penalty if they don't take advantage. Frustration from the Raptors. I got it, I got it, relax, I got it. And it's just unfortunate, too, because this is all frustration. You, if you look back at Colorado historically, in the semifinals in the first year of the MLR, and last year just slipped out of contention through the midseason and, and just seemed to fall off the pace at the end, didn't make the playoffs. Make sure he's on the ground before and now contest, they're going to yeah. go into yeah. week three without a win. It it's one of those teams we talked about at the beginning, Mark, Make that sure it's a team that really needs to continue to build itself as the season goes. So the Legion still with seven minutes to score again from that trademark driving mall up to five meters. They look absolutely unstoppable right now. Too much pressure for the Raptors. Another penalty to the Legion. Oh, you, you get the feeling that Dean Ware is and 19, and then we have looking on, on the sidelines side and well. want Pete the Malcolm the to do what he's done. It's 23 from the side. There's Big Ben Mitchell with the head tape, formerly of the Austin MLR team. That's been a huge acquisition for the Legion. Yeah, wearing the 19 jersey. Six foot seven inches, former fullback and center. And now playing lock. Still got the skills of a back. Part of the engine room now. There's definitely a shining light for the winless Austin Elite last year. Now the Gil Gronies. Fine. Again, such a tough position on the field to defend from. Five meter scrum. Same picture. You're tight. Plenty of space. Yeah. Now to the right for the Legion. Elbow, feet under you, you're good, okay? Do you go left? Do you give Ty Anosa on the right hand side? The seven specialist a crack at the try line, or do you just try and drive it over with your pack of eight? Crouch. Options are plenty here for the it Legion. It just depends who gets the vote. So Ferris has a go himself, finds Inosa, and that's the tackle that was needed on that side of the field. Up ahead. Ball comes loose and it's turned over. Get on side, get on side. A certain try saver. Boyer it was. Roll out. Raptors now. A ton to Boy, do, and that's really by help. Boyer. They want to play the ball. What a great hit. Hold on, we got blood here. You talk about taking a gamble. Ferris. Boyer comes up and just delivers the monster shot. Thank you. Little blood there. Well, we got second player with blood here. It's the, oh, both of them. It's the classic eyebrow shot. 
Mark, it, it's kind of a rite of passage. If you don't have that scar in your eyebrow, you just haven't played enough rugby. Patrick, they need to get a guy ready. Seeing those images again, and as you said, just high risk play from Nick Boyer, completely leaving his opposite man to jam in and apply the pressure to Inosa. And it paid off. So Talafo getting some attention. Luke White also going to get the same treatment. Time's on. Let's take this opportunity here from uh, Jessamine down on the sideline. Guys, you talk about the toughness of these players. I mean, we've got a player here who's obviously had to exit just because of the blood on his face, but you're going to try to get back in this one. And like you mentioned, you just haven't played enough rugby. If you don't have that scar, this one definitely getting stitched up right now and trying to make it back on for the final few minutes of this one. Well, another towering kick from Quinlan. Hey, watch the short hit. They're gonna snap. It wasn't Quinlan. We're so used to seeing Quinlan. He was actually up the field. Was it the leaper? Nonetheless, the Raptors have found themselves up where they need to be. This game is out of reach, but let's see what kind of character they have now to finish this game. At least gain some confidence from finishing strong. Going into round three, London. We haven't seen much of him. And such a dangerous player as well. It's yeah. a high tackle. Oh. Derek Summers. Oh. High. A trip. Oh, JP, do he's human. Throws the leg out. It's a dangerous tackle. Yeah. It was a low dangerous tackle in that case. I'm normally used to seeing high dangerous tackles. Petzer puts that one into touch. Yeah, you can see just too tempting for Duplessis, but he sticks that toe out. Let's go, Glendale. Colorado, come on. Colorado. In the waning minutes here. Come on. And this is one of those confidence builders. So the Raptors, can they finish strong? 22 points on the board for them. The ball comes down and it's straight. It's not straight. Yeah, it's, a, it's a short ball, but it's thrown straight to the player. What do you want? Scrum or line out? Well, line head coach out. Oh, okay. Pete Ballace has plenty of creases to iron out. Yeah, coach is sitting right in front of us, actually. And I wonder what's going through his head. He's a nut. He's a nut. Taken cleanly. Well, there. Devin, Devin, Devin Short takes that. Short from Las Vegas. He is indeed another bright player of the future, Devin Short. Coming around the corner now. <laughs> oh, good shot on Stanfield. He'll appreciate Down. that. Did it go forward? It's going back, says the referee. So the Raptors have a chance through the hands. Good skills. Out the back door, dummies. That one's going forward. Just squandering opportunity after opportunity here, the Raptors. Well, you know, this is just Colorado trying to get something done, you know, and... and a little bit of desperation in some of this, these passes, but the game's not going to be won or lost depending on whether they can keep the ball. You've got to credit the San Diego defense, though. They've made it difficult for Colorado all day. We talked about the lack of structure in this game. It has been a little haphazard, and, and it's favored San Diego, frankly, who's been able to take the trash and clean it up. Turn it into positive points. Colorado is giving them too many opportunities. Fine. Something you heard Coach Boyce say at halftime. 
Had trouble with that last week. No, it's full time. This will be the last play. Tap. So just tap it and then kick it. Just to tap it, and that will be full time here at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. San Diego Legion too strong. That's their second five-point win in as many weeks. As they run away with this one, 49 points to 22 over Colorado. Plenty of exciting moments. See that sportsmanship between the players. And we're going to go to a short break. Come back with some post-game comments after this. <laughs> fans rugby is everywhere the giant is awakening and rugby wrap-up is there with the alarm clock rugby wrap-up global rugby coverage sometimes with a wink weekly studio shows daily website content breaking news evolving stories the biggest names in the game on camera all over social media pundits from all corners of the planet local global professional amateur female and male find it all on rugbywrapup.com Wow, plenty of thrills and spills here in Las Vegas and a dominant performance from San Diego as they take out this one, 49 points to 22. And one man who had a heavy influence on this victory and is our man of the match is with Jessamine McIntyre right now. Yeah, influence is an understatement when it comes to Nate Osberger, our man of the match. Now, we saw you have a try, but I think what was even more exciting was the assist that you had. How'd you keep your jets going that late into the match? It's, it's pretty easy when our guys are breaking tackles on the inside. Uh, I thought our backs did a really good job, especially in that passage of play once I moved out to the wing. We were doing just a really exceptional job on the outside, uh, beating guys with one-on-ones and just finishing tries. You guys got a lot of rotation in. Your reserves really got out there, and you broke open the game with them out there. What was it like? Was there a difference between your starters and reserves in the second half? Absolutely, absolutely, and, and we preach that. We try and get our impacts, bringing in different en energy, more energy to the game, and I thought they did an exceptional job uh, coming in cleaning up some of our lineouts, cleaning up some of our sloppy play and getting us a pretty big victory. I stand by a lot of benches and your team is extremely engaged. What is it about that unity? What have you guys been doing in the off season? Uh, we just, I mean, we work really hard for each other. So I think, uh, you know, when we get the opportunity to play in games, to wear the uniform, we all get really excited about it because we know how much work goes into just being out here in this moment, playing in these games. So. Uh, We'll go back to the drawing board after this one, but I just love love how much energy we bring to each game. Well, you get on a plane 2-0 on the season. How does that feel? Yeah, it's great. It's 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 a good start to be 2-0, and, and hopefully we can keep the thing going in the right direction. All right, we'll keep an eye on you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, guys. Yes, congratulations to Nate and the Legion. Let's see what that has done to the current standings. So obviously San Diego race away, and they are clear a point over Toronto. Interesting as you look down the table 
And there's one other team that may get up to po possibly not 10 points, but Atlanta lead Nola with two minutes to go down in New Orleans right now, Brian. Well, I think the undefeated teams, San Diego and Toronto in particular, look really solid so far. But it, it, there's so much movement that's going to happen in this table. Atlanta just scored 22-10 right now, and it looks like they're going to go on, uh, ahead and win on NOLA's home ground. So good job for Scott Lawrence and Atlanta, but still a lot of rugby left. 14 weeks still. Some teams have a lot of work to do, and some teams are looking pretty good. And great to see the new teams coming in and really stamping their authority on this league. Indeed. We had a great game here today. See some highlights. Plenty of action, a big win by San Diego, their second in as many weeks. And that signs us off here in Las Vegas for Brian Hightower, Jessman McIntyre, and the entire crew. I'm Mark Stabina, wishing you a good night. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.